Chapter 29 I kissed Bella lightly on the forehead on my way out to the garage. She was asleep, her face peaceful. I'll be right back, I murmured to Rosalie. She nodded and then lay a hand on my arm. I don't want to have to leave here. Not yet. I know, I whispered. I'll talk to him. Okay. She smiled slightly. Give him hell for that tirade by his she-bitch. I snorted and then headed out the front door. Coming outside to rat on me, are you, bloodsucker? I could see Leah's eyes far down the drive, glinting. Ah, shut up, Leah, thought Seth. I wouldn't have to talk to Jacob about you if you didn't act like such a child, I muttered. Bite me, Leah snarled. Oh, gladly, I said softly. You have no idea. Come on, guys, moaned Seth. Sorry, Seth. I knew I shouldn't let Leah get to me, but just the sight of her kindled my temper. I headed for the garage before Jacob's car came around the corner. I watched it roll down the drive, around the house, and into the garage. Jacob's eyes flashed at me, surprised and annoyed to find me waiting. A few things, Jacob, I murmured as soon as he turned off the car. Jacob's mouth grew into a very tight line, and he took a long breath before slowly getting out of the car. He tossed me the keys. I did not ask where he had been, and he was not thinking about it. Thanks for the loan, he said voice bitter. Apparently it'll have to be repaid. What do you want now? I took a breath. I would start with the simplest. It was easier to be mad at Jacob, or mad at one of his pack, than to hurt him. Firstly, I muttered, I know how adverse you are to using your authority with your pack, but... Jacob stared at me, shocked by this line of conversation. He hadn't seen this coming. What? If you can't or won't control Leah, then I... Leah? Jacob spoke through gritted teeth. What happened? I thought about her standing in my house, our house, shrieking at Bella, hurting her. She came up to see why you had left so abruptly. I tried to explain. I suppose it might not have come out right. What did she do? asked Jacob. She faced to her human form and... Really? Jacob interrupted, surprised. She wanted to speak to Bella. To Bella? said Jacob incredulously, not catching on. Yes, damn it. Bella's heartbroken, guilty face swam in front of my eyes, and my temper began to simmer over. I won't let Bella be upset like that again. I don't care how justified Leah thinks she is. I didn't hurt her. Of course I wouldn't. Jasper, however, I couldn't vouch for. But I'll throw her out of the house if it happens again. I'll launch her right across the river. Hold on. Jacob was still not following. What did she say? Leah's words to Bella rang in my ears. I don't know what to make of you, if you're delusional, cruel, or just plain heartless like the blood-sucking vampire you want to become. My muscles were tensing, my anger prickling at my instincts. I pulled in a deep breath, trying to regain full control. Leah was unnecessarily harsh. I'm not going to pretend that I understand why Bella is unable to let go of you, but I do know that she does not behave this way to hurt you. She suffers a great deal over the pain she is inflicting on you, and on me, by asking you to stay. What Leah said was uncalled for. Bella's been crying. Wait, Jacob said, holding up his hand. Understanding crept into his expression. Leah was yelling at Bella about me? Was he so blind to the regard she held for him? You were quite vehemently championed. I didn't ask her to do that. Jacob's voice was soft, surprised. I know. Obviously, of course he knows, thought Jacob. He knows everything. He was shocked, maybe even a little touched, I thought irritably that Leah had come to his defense, in her human form no less. I can't promise to control Leah, he said. I won't do that. My teeth gritted together. He needed to step up on this one. But I'll talk to her, okay? He went on, watching my expression. And I don't think there'll be a repeat. 
Leah's not one to hold back, so she probably got it all off her chest today. I would say so, I muttered. Anyway, I'll talk to Bella about it, too. She doesn't need to feel bad. This one's on me. I already told her that, I snapped. Of course you did. Is she okay? She's sleeping now. Rose is with her. So the psycho is Rose now? He's completely crossed over to the dark side. I ignored this. It wasn't worth trying to explain, although I didn't think I needed to tell Jacob how strong the bonds of family, blood, or otherwise could run. I thought of Bella's smile, her anticipation of tomorrow, her peaceful sleeping face. She's better in some ways, aside from Leah's tirade and the resulting guilt. Better? Because Edward can hear the monster and everything's all lovey-dovey now? Fantastic. I cringed inwardly at the bitter hate behind the word monster. I knew it was just an echo of my own voice only twelve hours ago. Jacob would not be able to understand my feelings toward the child now, and I didn't expect him to. But he needed to understand the importance of my being able to hear the baby's thoughts, beyond just cultivating my acceptance. It's a bit more than that, I said softly. Now that I can make out the child's thoughts, it's apparent that he... I paused. It was disconcerting how much I assumed it was a boy. Or she has remarkably developed mental facilities. He can understand us to an extent. Jacob's eyes widened with shock. Are you serious? Deathly. Yes. He seems to have a vague sense of what hurts her now. He's trying to avoid that as much as possible. He... I paused again wondering if this would just make him angry. But surely Jacob must appreciate what the child's feelings would be towards Bella. He loves her already. Jacob swallowed hard, his face very still. This is what has changed, Edward, he thought. The monster has convinced him of this love. He can't hate what loves Bella. That was probably true. Not hating something, someone, though, is different than loving them. That the child loved Bella may have convinced me not to hate him, but it was his own gentle wonder that led me to love him as well. That's why he can't hate me either. Jacob remained motionless, although deep strain showed behind his eyes. There's a big difference, though. I'm not killing her. My hands clenched. The child was not trying to kill Bella, but I didn't want to argue this point with Jacob. There was more he needed to know something I had to try to explain. The process, I believe, is more than we had judged. When Carlyle returns... They're not back? Jacob said suddenly. I was disturbed to see an image in his mind of Sam and Jared watching him drive past on the road. Maybe it had been foolish to let him go. Alice and Jasper are. Carlyle sent all the blood he was able to acquire, but it wasn't as much as he was hoping for. Bella will use up this supply in another day, the way her appetite has grown. Carlyle stayed to try another source. I took a small breath before I went on. I don't think it's necessary now, but he wants to be covered for any eventuality. Why isn't it necessary? Jacob asked. If she needs more. I felt tightness in the back of my throat. I wasn't sure what his reaction would be. Bad enough that I had done this to Bella, in his mind. Bad enough that I now loved what we had both once hated. And now, I was going to hasten her human death, rip away what little future he still clung to. I am trying to persuade Carlyle to deliver the baby as soon as he is back, I said softly. Jacob's face visibly stiffened and paled. His heartbeat picked up, and I could smell the sweat on his palms. What? He choked out. The child seems to be attempting to avoid rough movements, but it is difficult. I tried to keep my voice even, gentle. He's becoming too big. It's madness to wait when he is clearly developed beyond what Carlyle had guessed. We had had no other measure to use at the time, but that for a human child, for something that was obviously not. But we could correct that before it was too late. Bella's too fragile to delay. Jacob's breath sped up, hitching slightly. First I counted on Edward's hatred of the thing, he thought. 
Now I realize I counted on those four days as well. Pain tore through him like jagged glass, so much more the worse, because he could only foresee certain death. The future receded, giving way only to suffering and heartache. An endless ocean of grief is waiting for me, he thought in despair, stretching out before me. I'm sorry, Jacob, I thought. I wanted to give him some hope, some relief from the agony, by telling him I wasn't going to let Bella die, that I had a plan, that I was going to save her, save them both, but he wouldn't care about the baby. I stayed silent, though, afraid he might see these words as even more of a betrayal, that he might consider my hope a lie. But Jacob surprised me, reading my face. You think she's going to make it, he whispered. Yes, I said softly, but not human, and I was sure he knew that by now. Did he see what this act was leading to? That was the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. Jacob stared at me silently for a moment. I went on. Yes, I repeated. Waiting as we have been for the child to be ready, that was insanely dangerous. At any moment, it could have been too late. But if we're proactive about this... If we act quickly, I see no reason why it should not go well. Knowing the child's mind is unbelievably helpful. Thankfully, Bella and Rosalie agree with me. Now that I've convinced them that it is safe for the child if we proceed, there's nothing to keep this from working. When will Carlyle be back? Jacob's voice was barely audible. He was still reeling from the loss of time, and he didn't even know how little time was left. I laid down one more cruel blow. By noon tomorrow, I whispered. Jacob's legs gave out under the weight of the shock. He grabbed at the car to catch himself. I reached out to give him support, and then dropped my hand. His pain ached through me. I wanted to support him, give him strength. But he didn't want anything from me. I had done nothing but bring pain and ruin to his life. I had left him no choice but to hate me. I'm sorry, I said quietly. I am truly sorry for the pain this causes you, Jacob. Though you hate me, I must admit that I don't feel the same about you. I think of you as a... What word to express the connection I felt towards Jacob? A brother, in many ways. Ah, but he would hate that. A comrade in arms, at the very least. I regret your suffering more than you realize... But Bella is going to survive, and I know that's what really matters to you. Jacob was staring at me, eyes haunted. All he wanted to do was give in to the grief. I knew I should just leave him alone, but I couldn't. I hate to do this now, while you're already dealing with too much. But clearly, there is little time. I have to ask you for something, to beg if I must. Yes, it was worth that much, I suddenly realized. And this was not just about avoiding breaking the treaty with the pack, or giving us some precious time before moving, but also about trying not to betray Jacob again, if I could avoid it, to give him some power over the future, as terrible as this decision would be for him to make, if he chose correctly, if he gave us permission to deviate from the treaty. Maybe he might also give himself the permission to one day accept Bella, Perhaps if he didn't feel bound by the treaty, by the duty to his people, to hate and kill Bella, then eventually he might be able to ease the future hate in his heart and see a little of the girl he had once loved. I don't have anything left, Jacob said, his voice rough. I reached up my hand to take his shoulder, much as I would have with one of my brothers in a time such as this, but it fell again. Jacob did not want to be my brother. I'm sorry, again and again, I thought. But you do have something left, Jacob. In taking away the time Jacob had counted on, I had taken away almost everything. He had given his heart, his love, his peace of mind, his home and his family. He had sacrificed so much to love and protect Bella, far more than me. But now I needed something else from him. I know how much you have given, I said softly. But this is something you do have, and only you. I'm asking this of the true Alpha, Jacob. 
I'm asking this of Ephraim's heir. Jacob stared at me silently, his eyes deep pools of loss. I want your permission to deviate from what we agreed to in our treaty with Ephraim. I want you to grant us an exception. I want your permission to save her life. You know I'll do it anyway, but I don't want to break faith with you if there's any way to avoid it. We never intended to go back on our word, and we don't do it lightly now. I want your understanding, Jacob, because you know exactly why we do this. I want the alliance between our families to survive when this is over. Sam, it's Sam you want. No, Sam's authority is assumed. It belongs to you. You'll never take it from him, but no one can rightfully agree to what I'm asking except for you. It's not my decision. He didn't want to be burdened with this right now, and I hated myself for heaving it on to him, but it was up to him. It is, Jacob, and you know it. Your word on this will condemn us or absolve us. Only you can give this to me. I can't think. I don't know. We don't have much time. I glanced at the house. I had heard Jasper's thoughts earlier. I knew he was planning to push Carlyle to arrange for a move as soon as Bella awoke. Jacob's word on this would buy us some relief from the pressure to go if the treaty held. Plus, if we were forced to change Bella before Jacob decided, what might be lost? I don't know. Let me think. Just give me a minute here, okay? Yes, I said. Of course. It did nothing for either of us to rush him, to push him. We had at least until tomorrow to get everything settled. Jacob started walking towards the back of the house, and I walked next to him. Leah had taken off on patrol, but Seth was still waiting by the edge of the lawn for Jacob. He pushed out into the open when we drew close. Hey, kid, said Jake. You okay, Jake? Seth thought, wondering what had occurred between us in the garage. He glanced momentarily at me. Sorry about earlier, Edward. His eyes flickered to the house. Is Bella okay? I gave him a swift nod, and he swung his muzzle up towards Jacob. It's cool, Jacob said, a strained, false note to his voice that brought a flash of worry to Seth's mind. I'll tell you about it later. Sorry to take off on you like that. Nothing to worry about, Seth thought, pulling back his lips to expose his teeth in imitation of a smile. As long as you're all right. Hey, tell your sister to back off now, okay? Enough. Of course, oh masterful one, thought Leah irritably, several miles out on patrol. Seth winced and nodded. I'll try. Jacob leaned against Seth's broad body. Get back to work. I'll spell you in a bit. Seth gave him a small shove back. I love you, man, he thought, before heading back out into the woods. He has one of the purest, sincerest, kindest minds I've ever heard, I said softly. You're lucky to have his thoughts to share. I know that, Jacob muttered. I suddenly heard the sound of liquid being drawn through a straw. Damn it, I had been gone too long, leaving Bella to wake up with me gone. I cursed my thoughtlessness as I moved swiftly into the house. Bella was sitting up on the couch. Jasper on the step behind her, his hands kneading her shoulders. He eyed me speculatively, having been able to catch some of my conversation with Jacob, but unable to hear his unsaid responses. "'Where is he?' Alice thought petulantly, her eyes on me. "'I know he's coming. I feel better by the second. I tipped my head towards the door, and then started towards Bella. "'Should we tell her about the vision?' Alice wondered for a second. I paused, taken aback. "'Yes.' We should tell Bella. It was her life, her future. But I wondered if the fact that the vision was so fleeting would worry her, and would I tell them what I thought had prompted the vision? My mind strayed to the silver syringe upstairs, and an involuntary shudder went through me. Thank God Carlyle would be here to help me with this. I would need him badly. 
I moved quickly over to Bella and sat down on the floor next to her, kissing her lips softly. I felt a burning tingle in the back of my throat. As controlled as my responses were to Bella's scent, the smell of someone else's blood on her breath was so odd, disconcerting. "'Bella, love,' I murmured, running my fingers through her hair. "'I thought you were sleeping. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have left.' "'Don't worry,' she said, smiling and turning her head to kiss my hand. "'I just got so thirsty it woke me up. It's a good thing Carlyle's bringing more. This kid is going to need it when he gets out of me.' I stared at her, slightly dumbfounded. "'True,' I said slowly. "'That's a good point.' She was absolutely right. Why would the child's cravings change once he was out? Rosalie rolled her eyes at my shocked expression. "'What the heck did you think I was going to put in that bottle I made, Edward?' she thought sarcastically. "'Milk?' I read in her thoughts that she had already filled one of the metal receptacles with blood and had plans to create another. I felt slightly frustrated and embarrassed by my ignorance." Not only had I not thought how to feed the baby, I hadn't even thought what to feed him. "'I wonder if he'll want anything else,' Bella said reflectively. I looked at her, considering. Could a being crave blood like my kind, and food like a human? Was such a thing possible? "'I suppose we'll find out,' I said slowly. Jacob was climbing the front stairs, and he stepped slowly into the house. "'Finally,' muttered Alice. Bella's face lit up with a brilliant smile, and her eyes turned from mine towards Jacob, but as she saw his face, her expression quickly mangled with guilt and regret. "'I want to punch Leah right in her stupid mouth,' thought Jacob, watching her expression fall. I couldn't have agreed more. "'Hey, Bells,' Jacob said quickly, anxious to show her all was okay. "'How you doing?' "'I'm fine,' she said her voice breaking slightly. I took her hand and held it. "'Big day today, huh?' Jacob went on, his voice falsely bright. "'Lots of new stuff.' "'You don't have to do that, Jacob,' Bella said softly. "'I don't know what you're talking about.' Jacob went to sit on the arm of the couch. "'I'm so, so—' Jacob reached out and lightly held her lips together silencing her apology. I leaned back, giving them space, fighting the natural urge to push his hand from her. Jake, she mumbled through closed lips. You can talk when you're not being stupid, Jacob said. I gauged Bella's expression. She was determined to apologize. Fine, I won't say it. Her voice was garbled. Jacob pulled his hand back. Sorry, she said smiling. He smiled down, drinking in her eyes, falling into their depths. I see everything I was looking for in the park, he thought despondently. Suddenly, his mind was filled with an endless sea of people, girls, girls with no faces. He had been to the park, trying to find someone he might imprint on, the only thing, he thought, that would end this agony. Pain filled my chest, and I ached for him, and this impossible, unattainable love he held in his heart. He may never be free of it. It was too much a part of him. She was too much a part of him. Imprinting may be the only way he could ever move on, and I was saddened by the desperate fruitlessness of his search today. How badly, I realized, I wanted him to find that, not to keep him from Bella, as I had once hoped, but to save him. Tomorrow she will be someone else but hopefully alive. And that's what counts, right? Yes, Jacob, yes, I thought desperately. It's what we both really want, ultimately. Do the right thing, Jacob. For Bella, for me, for you. Tomorrow she'll be my enemy, or she'll be my ally. Apparently that decision is up to me. I waited, still, for his decision. His eyes met mine so briefly, and then went back home back to Bella. Fine. Go ahead. Save her. As Ephraim's heir, you have my permission, my word, that this will not violate the treaty. The others will just have to blame me. You were right. 
They can't deny that it's my right to agree to this. Relief washed through me, followed by overwhelming gratitude and fervent pride for Jacob's strength. Thank you, I whispered, my voice emotional. Alice, Jasper, and Rosalie's eyes shot towards me. What did you agree to? Jasper thought. Is this to do with the treaty? I shook him off slightly with my head. We could discuss this later, when Jacob had left. Rose, Bella said suddenly, her voice uncomfortable. Again? said Rose, smiling gently. I think I've drunk two gallons in the last hour, Bella said, blushing slightly. I stood up to let Rosalie in to pick her up. Can I walk? Bella asked. My legs are so stiff. I felt a pang of unease. She was so fragile. I didn't want her falling or straining herself. Are you sure? I asked. Rose will catch me if I trip over my feet, which could happen pretty easily since I can't see them. I won't let her fall, Edward, Rose thought, slowly getting Bella onto her feet, her hands hovering ready next to her. Bella stretched her body. That feels good, she sighed. Ugh, but I'm huge. One more day. She patted her stomach gently. All righty then, she said, looking towards the bathroom. A slight movement caught my eye. Bella's cup was falling over, 